Another way to represent documents as vectors is using neural networks. So first, we will talk very little about word embeddings because uh, many of you have seen that before. So you've seen these two models, at least, CBAO and SKIPGRAMS. And these models are used to create semantic representations of words. Now, importantly, well, it's important to notice here is that these representations are not for documents or for queries, because in information retrieval, we care about documents and queries. These representations are for separate words. So they should be then applied somehow to represent the whole document or the whole query. And um, so I'll not explain how this is done because for master AI, this is explained in the new uh, the, the natural language processing course. Uh, for other master programs, uh, if you need help with that, you can request a slot on Friday from three to five, where TAs will help you to get through these models. Uh, but as I said, these models are only used in a certain way to do the rank. So what is the way? So just this slide. First, we compute word embeddings according to the previous two models. And those models are from NLP. Then uh, actually, when we have word, uh, queries and documents, the simplest way to aggregate the word embeddings into document embedding is through average word embedding. So if you have for queries, it's more obvious. So if you have, let's say, three words in a query, you just take an average of those three words, an average vector, and that will be the vector representation of the query. Obviously, uh, for large documents, for documents, let's say, longer than 100 words, the average of word embeddings will be, let's say, a very strange thing. It will not really represent the document. Because uh, for long documents, a few thousand words, uh, an average word embedding will be way off the real meaning of the document. But still, this is one of the approaches that you can use. And you, you will use that, or you are using that in your assignment already. So basically, uh, from these embeddings, you just compute the average. And uh, this is how you represent documents and queries. And then what do you do with this vector representations? you compute a cosine similarity. So that's basically what I want to say about using word embeddings uh, for IR. And again, the main message here is that this average word embedding is too general for long documents. So for this reason, there is another approach is, well, it's called document embeddings. It started with paragraph embeddings. And this meant to fix the, the problem with the average, just average in words. This meant to be, well, to build a document vector representation directly. So basically, uh, in addition to word embeddings and word representations here uh, or here, we have an additional vector, which is a document representation. So here it's a paragraph. As I said, this, this, this uh, paper here, it, uh, proposed a paragraph to vector and um, a model, and now it's also a document to vector model, but the idea is the same. So paragraph is, is a, well, a container of multiple words, a sequence of multiple words, and it has its own vector as a representation. And you can also use a SIBA or SKIPGRAM model in a sense. Now, how do you learn these vectors? The separate vectors for documents. So basically, uh, the process is sim uh, roughly like this. You, you do it iteratively. You use uh, you use gradient descent, and at every step of uh, gradient descent, you pick well or you sample a fixed length context, uh, context from a random paragraph. So basically, you choose a document or paragraph. Let's say paragraph and document here are the same. I mean the same by them. So you pick a fixed length uh, sequence of words called context here from a random document. And then you uh, basically uh, recalculate the parameters from this network or this network. 
uh, and then you do this many, many times. Basically, you pick this random context that get, uh, that get set on, and you use it to update the parameters. So you initialize randomly all these vectors, uh, pick this four words from some document here, you update the parameters, pick another sequence of words, let's say sequence of four words uh, for maybe another document, you update the parameters and then pick another four words from yet another document and so on and so forth uh, till convergence basically. So you still do exactly the same process as before when you did uh, word representations, but you not only learn this three vectors here, but also this fourth vector here for every document basically. So this is very general and actually in your assignment you are using or you will use uh, the Genzyme implementation of this, but this is what is done um, behind the, the function call. And um, then again, uh, how do you use that for ranking? So obviously here you already have document representations. So in, in case of word embeddings, you have to create them by averaging words and documents. Now here you directly compute document representations as vectors. So the document representations are given, well, they are trained, let's say. So now when um, you, you can do that offline, so you don't need any query for that, any, anything. Now, when a query arrives, you don't have a representation of the query yet, right? You only have representations for documents. And what you do for that, you uh, already have the trained word metrics, W, you fix it. You already have the trained document matrix D. And uh, you add just uh, another column to that the matrix D, and that column represents the query. So you have a matrix of these vectors, and now you have another vector of that length that will represent the query. You add it to the matrix D, and uh, basically you run another round of uh, gradient descents of uh, another round of updates with the fixed W and the matrix D similar to the previous slide. But now the matrix D is almost learned apart from one column. And basically by the end of this learning process where W is fixed and D has only one additional column, you will get um, that column updated and that will be the query representation essentially. That's not quick, I guess, but at least, uh, well, then you not only have document representations, but also the query representation. And in the end, of course, again, you use cosine similarity. So uh, basically, uh, we saw two ways of creating, well, of using uh, vectors to represent documents. One is through LSA or LSI, where you do singular value decomposition on the term document metrics. And another is using neural networks in the way of word to vec or doc to vec, where you actually train uh, document representations from contexts, from word context, let's say. But uh, then the idea is the same as uh, even using TF-IDF for ranking, you just have two vectors for a query and for the document, and then you have similarity between them. And in the assignment, uh, you will have a chance to compare those, the, all the different methods. Now, uh, what we've seen so far, and actually with that, uh, we conclude studying document representation and meshing, and we will move to learning to rank next. So we saw that, again, documents can be represented as distributions. And when we use term-based matching, then uh, that is called language modeling. Now here it's topic modeling because it's semantic based matching. So hopefully we, we hope that topic models actually extract semantics in addition to just uh, directly matching words. The same for the vectors to represent documents. We saw a vector space model with the TF idea of weights for the term based matching. And if we go for semantic based matching, it's either LSI, LSA or something based on uh, word embeddings and document embeddings. Now, where can you read this? Uh, LSI, LSA is covered here uh, in the standard text textbook. Topic models, this is the seminal paper on topic models by uh, Bly and others. So LDA basically. 
and uh, on word to vec and on compositionality. So basically, average in word to vec is called compositionality. How do we well aggregate, compose different embeddings for different words into one embedding for for the whole paragraph for the, for the whole document? So that's on the word to vec, and this is on paragraph to to vec, doc to vec, basically. As I said, uh, this concludes the part on document representation and matching. And next we will see how to actually learn the ranking directly, not ranking documents by their scores, but trying to learn the optimal ranking as a whole. So stay tuned.